Luke chapter 4. You know, tonight the pastor was talking about the Holy Ghost. Not a better subject once you get born again. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4. We're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Ghost tonight. And uh, it is so important that you get a hold of uh, what the Holy Ghost is all about. And, uh, you know, Jesus said that it was expedient that he leave so that the Holy Ghost would come. Now, the Holy Ghost, man, during Jesus' day was on, on Jesus. Because Jesus was the one that was carrying the anointing. Now, he could take the anointing. He could speak the anointing because he gave it to the twelve, didn't he? And then he put it on the seventy. But... Other than that, though, you got to remember Jesus ministered under the Old Covenant. Jesus was not a New Testament, what we would call a New Testament prophet, priest. He was an Old Covenant. He, he did everything in line. That's why it says he fulfilled the Old Covenant. Because he ministered under the Old Covenant to perfection. He showed the people what it could be like if you followed the Old Covenant. We know the Old Testament prophets, Elijah, Elisha, many of the Old Testament prophets were powerful people. They flowed in a very powerful anointing. In the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, during those days, the anointing would only come on the prophet, priest, and king. And if you wasn't a prophet, priest, or king... It wasn't somebody special that Jesus or that God decided to use like a donkey one time. Praise God. Spoke through that donkey. Hallelujah. I'd have loved to have been there. How about you? That would have been interesting. Hallelujah. Even though some of the times back when I used to get a high, I thought he was different things were speaking to me. Trash cans, different things. I used to see all kind of stuff. And it would speak to me, and I would, uh, I thought that was cool. But when the Holy Ghost speaks to you, when God speaks to you, that is cool. And to you young people, I tell you what, or anybody here for that matter, the sooner you are introduced to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the sooner you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues, the better off you're going to be. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, you may think that it's going to be a lot easier once you get out of high school, but I got news for you. It gets harder. When I went to college, that's when all my troubles began. I mean, I was good with God until I went to college. And that's when all hell broke loose. But thank God, that's been a long time ago, praise God. But the Holy Spirit is so important to us and I tell you, to all you adults, if you've not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you don't speak in other tongues, you need to. Because the Word of God will open up to you. And you will learn so much more and understand so much more about the Bible once you do that. And you cannot even begin to understand what I'm talking about until you get on the other side of it. And then you'll look back and say, wow, I never knew it could be like this. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place and we love you. I love you. I thank you for what you have done in my life. I thank you for what you've done in this church. And I thank you for what you're going to do tonight. The Holy Spirit, we just lift you up. For you are God in the earth. And you're in this place. And you're in me, praise God. And I thank you for it. And so now, I just ask, you're the great teacher. And I just ask that you would teach tonight. Anoint me to teach. Anoint the ears of the hearer that they may hear. And I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. 
If y'all can agree with that, say amen. amen. I want you to back up to Luke 3 instead of 4. And let's begin there. Look in verse 21. You need to understand and remember that Jesus is God, right? He was 100% God and 100% man. In verse 21 it says, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, and the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. Let me tell you something. God is pleased with you when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Once the Holy Ghost comes, notice the word that was used here is the word upon. Like a dove upon him. He came up on him. Amen. Amen. And what happened there in the book of Acts when the Holy Ghost, he did what? He came upon the people. He came up on them in the name of Jesus. Praise God. But if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost upon him, how much more do you and I need the Holy Ghost to come upon us? He was perfect in every way. Any other perfect ones here? Then you need the Holy Ghost so much more. But I want to tell you what Jesus did say, as I said a while ago, it is expedient that He left so that the Holy Ghost would come. Hallelujah. Now, go on over to uh, Luke 4. Look at verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know what the word gospel means? Good news. I looked that up. And sure enough, it means Good news. And that's not a heavy message, but I want to tell you something. It's good news. Jesus. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Jesus was anointed to preach good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. Not bad news. There's pulpits all over America that preach bad news. If you get on Facebook, you're seeing a lot of bad news will come down through there. I'm talking about there's a lot of news facts that come through, and it's full of bad news. Newspapers are full of bad news. The news media is full of bad news. People you talk to is full of bad news. People you work with is full of bad news. When I come to church, I don't want to hear bad news. I want to hear something good. Amen. Amen. I want to hear good news. And what Jesus did, he said that that anointing came upon him and he, uh, to preach the gospel, to preach good news to the poor. Now, I want you to think about this. He's not talking about poor financially. He's talking about poor in spirit. You with me? Poor in spirit. Remember, Jesus said, blessed are those that were poor in spirit. He's talking about those that aren't born again. But he said he was anointed to preach good news to the poor, to the poor in spirit, to those that aren't born again. Because that is good news. I don't know if you remember when you got saved, but when you got saved was a big day. Amen. I remember when it happened to me. I was 16 years old. And a, a man had the pastor of a huge church. I'm telling you, it's a big church. Hunter Street Baptist Church. And he, he got me during the summer. And 
All summer long, he taught me how to play handball. He'd come pick me up, and we'd go play handball. And then finally, right near the end of the summer, me and my best friend, Robert Farmer, he asked us, he said, would y'all like to receive Christ? By then, I'd have followed that man anywhere. I mean, he had befriended me. This was a big man, had a big church, and he was full of the love of God. And I said, yes, sir, I would. And me and my best friend, Robert Farmer, got saved right there, kneeling down by the couch. And uh, that pastor's study got born again, praise God. Here I am, 64 years old. I can see it like it was yesterday. Amen. Amen. Went that night. It was on a Wednesday. I went that night. And uh, he had us get up before the Wednesday night suppers and testify what had happened to us. Well, praise God. I was excited. Jesus changed my life. That was good news to me. But I want to tell you what, that just getting born again wasn't enough because when I hit 19, man, all hell broke loose at college. And before I knew it, I got into the drug scene and everything and couldn't get off of it for 12 years. You just don't get delivered from drugs. I didn't realize how delivered I am when it came to the alcohol part of the drugs. Until you hear of how many people still have to go to AA, still have to go to their meetings in order not to go drink. And if they take one or two drinks, they, they're, they're off the wagon. But man, when God delivered me, He delivered me, buddy. I want to tell you what, I got delivered. Boom! It was just like that. How many of y'all can go boom? Boom! I got delivered just like that. It was an amazing thing what he delivered me from. But it wasn't just the alcohol. He delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from all kind of things. It was that fast. I didn't have to go to AA meetings. If that worked for some people, fine. But the thing is, if, if you've got a worry and got fear on you that if I take one drink or I'm in the wrong position for 10 minutes in a bar or something... And if I hit one drink, I'm going back. I don't care if I've been off of it 20 years. That's a lot of fear in your life. Fear opens up the door to everything else. But I was delivered, and I thank God for it. How many of y'all been delivered? Hallelujah. But Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me. Now what is good news? He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. That's good news to the broken hearted, isn't it? Preach deliverance to the captives. Hallelujah. Recovering of the sight to the blind. To the blind, that's good news, man. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. How many of y'all know if you're bruised tonight, Jesus was anointed, and we have been anointed. Those of us that are saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have been anointed to set the captive free, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that acceptable year of the Lord is the day of Jubilee. That means that that day of Jubilee, all debts have been forgiven. You listen to me. Pastor touched on this this morning. I don't care what you did in your past. God has forgiven you. I don't care what it is. Are you with me? Don't let the devil hold you in captive by hanging on to that mess. And in your mind, you keep thinking back to it. How many of y'all know the devil will take you back to it? But I want to tell you, you've been delivered from it. You've been forgiven for it. You don't have to hang on to it. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I did some despicable things in my day. I know y'all haven't ever done anything. Y'all were pious and all. But me personally, I know what my life was like. And it was nothing compared to what my brother's was like. <laughs> 
I had to slide that in. He'll be preaching next month. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're both delivered. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got a friend that uh, we played ball together and everything. and He, he calls me. And I've been preaching to him for years. I had two of them that were real close to me. One of them got born again finally after about 10 years. I'd preach to him every time we'd get on the phone. He'd hang up on me. He said, well, I got to go. And then this other, but he finally got born again, praise God. And then the other one, he still calls me. And we're good friends. And, and uh, uh, But he thinks he, he said, he, he tells me this. He'll say, Lee, he says, uh, man, I'd be a big fish for God, wouldn't I? I'm such a sinner and everything. I'd be a big catch, wouldn't I, for God? I said, no, nah, brother. I said, there's a lot of big catches out there, a lot of people that were a lot worse than what you were or are. And once they came to Jesus, they're no big catch. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all know we're all sinners? Were at one time. We're not now. Amen? Amen. I'm not an old sinner saved by grace. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, praise God. Amen. Everybody say it with me. I'm the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. When He changed me, praise God, He made me right with God. I'm right with God. I might miss it, but I want to tell you what. I am right with God because God made me that way. That old nature is gone. That new nature has come. And I've got the nature of the living God living on the inside of me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. New creature. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Liberty. I love that word, liberty. And he says if we'll look into the perfect law of liberty. Hallelujah. Keep looking into the perfect law of liberty. Keep looking into the word because that would bring life to you. You know, I teach a healing school, and Lord, we've been doing that now seven, eight months. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize how many messages I could bring about healing. And got more to go. But see, there's a lot of people are mistaken about what the healing school is all about. Because we rarely lay hands on people. But what the healing school is all about is to get the word concerning healing in your spirit. You know, I catch myself, I preach so much on it now, and those scriptures just flow out. And I listen to this CD every day, every day, every day, of nothing but healing scriptures. Because that's what the word says to do. Proverbs 4, 20, 21, and 22. My son, attend to my word. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Hallelujah. Keep those things in the midst of my heart. Praise God. They are life unto those that find them. Amen. Everybody say life. life. They're life unto those that find them. And help to all thine flesh. Hallelujah. Or medicine. That word medicine to all thine flesh. The purpose is to get you so saturated in the healing scriptures. Amen. Amen. That, that it just pours out of you. And instead of every time somebody gets sick, every time sickness hits a place around you or, or here for that matter, or at home, what comes out of you is not that I'm sick. What comes out of you is the Word of God that you've been hearing and hearing and hearing. My desire is that as people hear me preach that, 
that they hear that <coughs> every day. Amen. That their con- that word is so prevalent in their life that that the healing scriptures just ring in their ears. Amen. Amen. That by His stripes I am healed. By His stripes I am healed. Amen. Amen. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. I am healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Instead of what the devil's trying to put in, which is you're sick. The way you're feeling, you're sick. But see, when you got that word in you and it's prevailing in your life and you're just constantly putting it in, putting it in, putting it in, it is medicine to you to where you don't have to have medicine from the doctor. It's God's medicine. How many of y'all have ever gone to the doctor and going to the doctor was not enough? What they did didn't cut it. Amen. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. Well, let me tell you what. When Jesus touches you, how many of y'all know when he touches you? Turn over to Acts chapter 10. Acts 10. Hallelujah. How many of y'all were here last Sunday night? Was that not a good sermon? I was telling him today, it's been with me all week long. And uh, if you'll do what he put out there, uh, it will work for you. He preached to just, he put together an excellent message, of which I'm going to get a copy of that. I want to get an outline on that, so I can just keep on going over that. Because he put out some steps and some things that being in the presence of God will change you, and I know it will. Amen. 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 Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? The The devil. Sickness is oppression of the devil. It's not of God. But there are people that will speak that it's of God. God put this on me. They will say, hey, put it on me to teach me a lesson. That's a lie from the pit of hell, friend. John 10, 10 says the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. The thief came. Satan came to do that, not God. I've come that you might have life and have it how? More abundant life. I like to add to that a life of purpose and reality, praise God. A life of purpose, a life of reality. But notice here it says that Jesus went about doing what? Good. Good. Let me tell you what, if it ain't good, it ain't God. Amen? Because there's people out there preaching that will try to put stuff on you. They've taken a little bit from the old covenant and a little bit from the new covenant and made their own covenant. Well, I want to tell you what, your own covenant's not going to cut it. We're not under the old covenant. We're new covenant people. We're under a better covenant based on better promises. On cut by the blood of Jesus, not by the blood of bulls and goats, like they did in the Old Testament. They had to do it year after year after year. Thank God I don't have to do it. Jesus did it for me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm preaching better than y'all are amen, and I can tell you that tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Bill. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bill's back there going. Amen, brother. Praise God. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. But God anointed Jesus of uh, uh, Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Now when Jesus comes in a house, when he comes in a place, what happens? You can bet it's going to be good, amen? amen? When he comes in, something happens. We have a, a move of sprinkling of the Holy Ghost here. But I want to tell you what, when Jesus shows up, Everybody in the house will get healed. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. It won't be no partials either. It will just be full-blown miracles. Amen. We're on the cusp of something here. There's something I'm telling you. I was telling my wife today when I left here, I said, we're right on the edge Amen. of, some, of a, a move, I'm telling you. Amen. We're right on the edge of it. So I've been here, when I first got here, I think we had 25 people, wasn't it? Wasn't many. Two and a half years ago, we were about 25. Now we're running sometimes 100 and something. Got a solid group in this place That's now. Right. Even on bad days, we got a good crowd. That's right. Well, that right there is a good sign, see? Because on good days, you're blowing it out. I mean, we're blowing out the place. But what's going to make the difference is the Holy Ghost. Amen. When the Holy Ghost takes over the surface, Amen. when we're to where we desire Him to such a degree that He begins to flow with total freedom in the house. Because let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is all about healing. The Holy Ghost is all about deliverance. The Holy Ghost is all about setting the captives free. He's all about setting the blind eyes open. The opening the deaf ears. We're talking about people getting healed sitting right in their seats. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you what, we're getting there. See, it's taken a while for the Holy Ghost. You've got to keep on welcoming the Holy Ghost. You've got to keep on communing with the Holy Ghost. Once you commune with Him, week after week after week, and in your individual life, day after day after day. Amen. I'm telling you, I've been there. I know what it's like. Amen. Every day, every day, every day. But in a church, once you've done it at home, and we all come in here, and we welcome Him in this place, like that song we sang a while ago, that love song. The Holy Spirit wants to do something big. He's going throughout the whole world looking for somebody to show himself strong in. He's looking for a church to show himself strong in. Amen. We just got to let him do it. Because when he comes in, when the Holy Ghost comes in a house, all sickness, all disease, demonic spirits, all this mess. He come, when Jesus walks in the front door, it's heading out the back door. It don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. You with me? I want to tell you what, we're getting there. I've never felt that before. But this morning, there was something about the service this morning. You were in tune up there, brother. I don't mind telling you. And when you started singing that little song, that little phrase you had there, amen, that was good. But see, when that prophetic voice starts coming forth from the music up here, hallelujah. And you were on it, I'm telling you. Man, there was an anointing on you. Praise God, that was good. But then once we see that, I'm telling you, we just keep on seeking out the Holy Ghost and then yielding to it. And then you're going to see something in here because God wants to do it here. We're, listen, we're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. Because some of y'all can't handle what the Holy Ghost would be doing here. I'm just telling you. Because when the Holy Ghost is in full bloom, there is no hold bar, friend. The Holy Ghost will do things, and, and, and people will wonder, why is this one doing this, you know? 
uh, uh, there'd be people jumping around. There'd be people, you know. I had a lady dance and ballet dance around across the front of the church. Honest to God, she ballet danced. She had a bad back when she started. But when she got through, she was totally healed. Ballet dancing. I'm sitting there thinking, what are you doing in my service? She was getting healed while she was doing. Are y'all with me? The Lord told Jerry Savelle one time in a, in a uh, big meeting, big auditorium. He said, I want you, to, I may have told y'all this before. I want y'all to bring everybody, all the people up here that have bad backs. I want y'all all come forward. And they all came forward. And he said, the Lord told him, now have them face down on the floor. And they, they all went face down on the floor, head to toe. And then the Lord said, I want you to take your shoes off. And I want you to run across their backs. Now, let me tell you what, you better be filled full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen? And you better know that's God, friend. And he took off running across their backs, and every one of them got up and said they were healed. Now, I want to tell you why that takes some gut, gumption. That takes some gut, man. Do it. But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the overflowing and are hearing from the Spirit of God, you it won't even phase you. Now your mind will be going crazy, but you'll move on it and watch God do great and mighty things. But let me tell you what, when that happens here and the pastor starts saying and doing some crazy things, you'll want to head for the door on my tank. And when you see demons just start coming out of people. Amen. Because it will happen, friends. And them heads start tilting back and those spirits start coming out of their mouth. And they start convulsing on the, in the pews and stuff. Now, me personally, I like to see that stuff. I always have. I said, bring it on, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to be in on it, praise God. I've always wanted to do that from day one. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the thing. I've thought about this. I know there's a lot of people here that never uh, is not filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thought about it on Tuesday nights. So I said, you know what? We'll take a month, turn this thing into a filling station. If people want to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's what Tuesday night will be. And that's all that we'll preach about. And we'll lay hands on people. Because sometimes it takes longer with some people than with others. Amen? Amen? I know it took me a while. I was trying to find everybody I could. Somebody in Banville help me. But in those days, there wasn't nobody could help me. I mean, nobody really knew a whole lot. I had to seek him on my own, but I wasn't giving up. Are y'all with me? Because he is so important to you and me. Because, it, you know, coming to church is just not enough. Might be for you. It was for me at one time. But it's just not enough for me. I want the move of the Holy Ghost. I want him as so full-blown Holy Ghost that, that, that acts... Uh, uh, you know, when <laughs> I'd love to see the pastor just walk down the middle of the aisle and everybody start falling out and people getting healed. Amen. 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 Is that possible? Yes. Amen. Amen. All things are possible Amen. to him that believeth. Amen. Say it with me. All things, All things are, possible are possible to him that believes. Amen. That's faith, friend. Hallelujah. That's faith. Just believing God, not doubting. Hallelujah. There you go. Praise God. Go, Pastor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is it that late? 8 7 Okay. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3 verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Hallelujah. That he might destroy, loose the works of the devil. Why? That was for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested. For this purpose. To destroy the works of the devil. When did he destroy them? When did he loose them? When? 2,000 years ago. Why are we still putting up with this guy? Why are we still having to deal with this guy knowing that we've got the power in us that we have everything it takes to deal with Him. Amen. Hello. Doubt and unbelief, my friend. Not spending time with God. Doing what He said last week, I'm telling you. Getting in the presence of God on a daily basis. Spending time with God. Communion with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. See, the Holy Ghost is a person. He's not an it. I know there's a song out there, and I remember going to my pastor about it, where it talks about, send it on down, send it on down. That ticked me off. I don't mind telling you. And I went to the pastor and said, man, it. Number one, he's already here. So why are you asking to send him back down? He never left, did he? Holy Ghost hadn't gone anywhere. You might have gone somewhere. He hadn't left. He's still on go. Hallelujah. The thing is that the Lord wanted to make a point to us that are here is the fact that we don't need to settle for where we are. We need to keep pursuing to get where He wants us to be. In the words of Nick Saban, it's a process and we need to step it up. Amen. I don't know if Bill uses that or not, but it's a process. And we... Are y'all with me? And we need to step it up. You need to step it up in your own life. Amen? So that we can move on with the things of God. Hallelujah. For this purpose, the Son of Man came to destroy it. The works of the devil. See, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good and healing all. But it wasn't just that. He destroyed when he went to the cross and when he rose from the dead. Remember this. If he'd have just stayed on the cross, that's why a lot of people, he's still on the cross in the Catholic Church. Thank God he ain't on the cross. Thank God he's not in the tomb. I'm so glad he ain't in the tomb. I'm so glad he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. Hallelujah. Making intercession for... How many of y'all know Jesus knows how to pray? You think he can get a connection to the Father? Amen. I tell you what, that story over there that deals with Cornelius. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was Cornelius. And uh, and he said that that his arms and all came up as a memorial in the face of God. Ooh, hallelujah. And God did something wonderful, didn't he? God did something beautiful. Praise God. As a memorial in the face of God. I mean, that's what that means. That was right there. He couldn't get away from it. 
I guess he could have, but maybe he didn't want to. But he did a work in old Cornelius' home, didn't he? God wants to do a work in you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody stand up. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, today, come on up here, bro. Do your thing. 